All right, everybody, welcome back. Today's a different kind of video. Today we're gonna be talking about the Go Fish Cam. I've been getting a lot of questions about it lately, so I decided to make a video on it. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. All right, number one is gonna be the clarity. How well can you see down there? Now I've heard a lot of people say uh, water clarity has to be perfect for you to see something. Uh, water clarity has to be crystal clear before you can see something. That is completely wrong. Um, I fish the Potomac River a lot, and that river 90% of the time has some kind of sand, some kind of mud in it. So I have used this in some very bad water conditions and still gotten some really, really good shots. For that, you just basically put a liter a foot long in front of the camera and you can see what's going on. So theoretically, you could put just a six inch liter on there and uh, see if you had six inches of water clarity. But um, for me to get the best picture shot possible, uh, so you can still kind of see what's going around down there is one foot. Also shout out to Hunter from Go Fish Cam. I learned a lot of these tips from him. Uh, so shout out to you, man, if you're watching this. But to see the water quality, basically all I do is put my tip in the water or I'll drop my bait down in the water and I can kind of judge how far down that is. And then if you have a foot of visibility, you just make a foot long leader and you put that on your camera and then that'll give you visibility out to your bait. If it's two feet, you can kind of get away with a little bit more and you'll be able to see a little bit better in there. So make a two foot leader and so on, etc. All right, how to rig the camera optimally. I have learned a lot from this one since the very beginning. So uh, I'm just gonna give you my insight on that. So initially I used to just have one single leader hanging off of the camera right here. And then I had a weight and then I had my hook. And that's how I fished it for a good few months. And uh, after that, I saw a different rig, uh, courtesy of Hunter, shout out to him once again. This is your camera, this is a weight, and this is a separate leader right here that is showing your bait. And then basically you have a piece of foam, and I use a pool noodle for this because they're cheap. You cast this out, your weight sinks to the bottom, your bait sinks, and then the camera basically floats back up when you give it a little bit of slack. And then when you tighten your line, it aims directly at your bait. And what this is gonna prevent is your camera getting cut off from being buried in the mud, buried in the sand. Um, I'll throw up some clips right here for you guys to see it. This rig is probably the most effective I've used thus far. I fish this on the bottom 90% of the time. I find it takes about a two ounce weight um, to hold this pool noodle down. Uh, this is kind of like the size comparison uh, to a, an actual full noodle right there. All right, let's get into castability. Uh, this thing, I thought it was gonna be a little harder to cast, but it's really not too bad. The weight on this thing is 3.3 ounces, and it is slightly negative buoyant, meaning it's gonna sink real, real slow in the water like that. You do need to have at least a medium heavy rod, if not a heavy rod. Um, I personally use a 10 foot surf rod medium heavy to cast this thing just because uh, I like to get my bait out there a little bit further and I want to make sure that uh, my rod can handle casting this thing. All right, next I'm going to talk about the bobber accessory that it comes with. So all these cameras come with one of these in the package and basically you just unscrew this top cap right here, unscrew that and then it is going to have those three little notches right there and you just line it up with the camera. Put that over there and then you screw this back on and this basically just acts as a bobber uh, with a straight down shot like that. I just recently used this and I was pretty surprised at how good the footage came out. Definitely would recommend the bobber attachment if you're fishing in some shallow water and uh, you know that you're gonna be able to get some shots down there. As for the filming modes, they have 1080, 60 frames per second. I believe they have 720 as well. Um, I personally use 1080 because I feel since you're already filming underwater, you might as well get the best picture quality that you can. They also have a night mode on here. If you turn it that way, they have a little green light that illuminates your bait right here. And I'll show some clips of me using it uh, before. And it's actually turned out very, very well. I've gotten some pretty good shots. Just like everything else, it's gonna depend on your water clarity and how murky it is down there at the time. But um, I find that if the water is good enough, you can get some really good shots down there during the nighttime. That green light also seems to attract a bunch of little bait fish, uh, which could in turn attract some bigger fish. So casting this with lures, I have done it. Um, I don't do it as much as fishing it on the bottom, but I have had some good success doing it. Um, you could definitely get some great shots down there. Basically, all you do for that is just tie a leader on. Again, base it off of your water clarity. Uh, I've used it for some bass and some pickerel. And uh, unfortunately, the few times I have uh, caught some fish on it, they have been biting the camera and not the lure. So you guys need to watch out for that if you're fishing for any pickerel, pike, musky, anything like that. All right, battery life. Battery life is probably the only concern I have with this thing. 
Uh, I find it lasts about an hour for me down there on the bottom. And uh, that's not too much time being a bait fisherman, being a fisherman that's waiting, you know, so. I did end up purchasing another one. Uh, so basically I bring a portable charger along with me and while one is charging, I am fishing with the other one. And then by the time this one dies, I can usually switch off to the other one. And then you can kind of just switch back and forth for a while uh, rather than just having one camera, then you have to stop to charge it for a few hours. All right, let's talk about how to rig your camera so you don't lose it. I know this is a concern of many people and I understand your main line needs to be significantly stronger than your than your leader material. And when I say significantly stronger, I mean significantly. <laughs> I'll use 65 pound brain as brain. I'll use 65 pound braid as my main line and then my leader might be like 20 to 25 pound test. So I know that if I do get it snagged, the leader's going to break off and I'm going to be able to save my camera uh, regardless. Another tip, if you know you cannot fish this safely in the spots that you fish, uh, for instance, if you know you're fishing a lot of rocks, a lot of current, a lot of things could possibly go wrong, and this is already a spot that you get snagged in, you 10 out of 10 should not be fishing your camera in that spot. I have a lot of spots on the Potomac River to fish, and I know I can only fish this camera safely in about three of them. So do your research on your spots, know that you're not putting your camera in harm's way, and if you are, make sure to do it smartly and safely with a strong main line. All right, so right now, guys, these are going for $199.99, and then on top of the warranty, that is an extra $50. That covers you up to one year if this one were to get lost, broken, and all that. If you get that warranty, this will cover it. They will ship you out a new camera. I definitely would recommend doing the warranty and spending that extra $50, because if you don't, and you lose this $200 camera, you're gonna need to pay another $200 to get another one. So just play it safe, just spend the extra money. I promise it'll be worth it. Also wanted to point out, I am not affiliated with GoFishCam whatsoever. I was not paid to make this video. I just really believe in the technology and I really enjoy using mine. So I wanted to give this video as a quick guide for you guys. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.